beautiful Cleveland, Ohio, where you can find the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the setting for the Drew Carey Show, and Anthony Soul's House of Horrors. Eleven bodies, countless more victims, and a seemingly endless legal battle. This week's episode is The Cleveland Strangler. Up, bump in the night, your heart fills with dread. Probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinisterhood. I'm gonna kill you. I, uh... I'm not ashamed to say that I have a person come and clean my house once a week. Your mother. <laughs> and she is related to me. <laughs> She's my it mom. It is Nancy McKinney. I pay her a very generous wage. <laughs> but I will say I just work so much. And when I'm not working, I'm like doing this. She probably or... loves to do it because she she's does. a mom and she wants to still feel like she's taking well, care of Before you. she did, I was like asking my neighbors about like their cleaning person and how much they pay and what the cleaning person does and everything. And. Meanwhile, my mom's like, are you eating enough? Like, do you have food? Do you, are, is the dishes piling up? And I was like, this is where I'm a problem solver. <laughs> and she's worried. Also, like, you know, it's fun to, you know, have a, to have a job that, yeah. with a really nice boss, a lenient boss. And also, I don't have to pay a stranger to come to my house. That's, oh, um, yeah. I like to think that, you know, mostly it's clutter. Like, I'm not, I'm not a dirty person. No, like, I, not. you know, everything that's out, it's not like old food is out. No. It's just like, it doesn't my smell shoes. in here. It doesn't smell. Uh, the only smell is coming from me. <laughs> I don't even smell that. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but like, you know, it's just like kind of shoes or clutter yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What about you? You have to like, is um, it just a well, constant battle between you yeah. versus pedal? Oh yeah. It's absolutely about, this is a constant battle. Tommy and I have too, the conversation of how to battle the dirt. We used to have a cleaning lady and then ugh, she decided to, well, she was already in school to become a doctor, but then like her workload got <laughs> too much. And I'm like, okay, well, your dreams are crushing my clean house. <laughs> um, but just the other night I was like, we've got to get another cleaning lady because it's an ending. And this is how I think about most things. Time is something you can never get back. True. So I will pay for something that I don't have to do if it means that I can be doing stuff like spending time with Ella or enjoying myself because True. if I cleaned every day the way the house needs to be cleaned, uh, it'd be you get it, nothing done. Yeah, well, or, it's that'd funny. be all I would be doing. I'll say it's funny you say that. First of all, one of my favorite quotes is from Joan Didion, and it's "How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our life." And mm. it's like, do you want to have a fulfilling life or a clean house? However, I will say, uh, Tim Ferriss, author of the Four yes. Hour Work Week, says. Menial tasks, if you have the means to farm them out, that that is what makes a productive person. So oh. frequently people are like, Heather, how do you do it all? How do you have the dream life? First of all, it's a dumpster fire. <laughs> but second of all, my mom comes and cleans right? my house. But exactly. I, like I said, I will always point out, I pay her. She's, you it do. just so happens that I have a very talented helper who is just blood related to me. Yes. So I know she's not going to rob me. No. Um, which is very nice. And she, you know, she does such a lovely job. I... My mom can works full time and lives an hour away, so she's not available to come clean my house. But I will still happily pay someone that I'm going to trust won't steal from me. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, our last one was great. I mean, she had a key to our house. and She every... became a doctor. I mean, I'm sure yeah, she's... I mean, yeah. I guess it, crazy people can become doctors. Sure. But... Yeah. Have you, have have you, you listened to Dr. Death? Dr. Death. <laughs> Very much so they can. That guy barely... He, that guy, like, he was barely skidded into doctor. home. Yeah, like, it was like if minute. I was a doctor. Actually, I would be a better doctor than so. Dr. Death. You would at least watch YouTube videos to learn. Yes, like, and how... I wouldn't... If I got into a situation where I was like, oh, I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to call this, guys. Y'all are right. I'm, I'm out. I'm done. Call somebody in. Yeah, I'm not going to keep just yanking things out of this person's body until I'm like, all right, this looks good. Well, you know, I will say my sister is, uh, she has a really sensitive nose. So mm -hmm. like she smells things from like miles away or like she'll be watching TV and be like, that guy looks like he stinks. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, Hillary, not Hillary. Helen Hunt looks like she smells like lemons. She does look like she smells like, absolutely. <laughs> She absolutely looks like she smells like lemon. Yeah. I will say, uh, this case, I feel like 
This is oh this house is a, a house so dirty even my mother couldn't clean. No, and nor it, would she want to. And I think you can about smell it from across the country. I we'll get into the smell of this house and how people around the neighborhood complained and thought, "Oh, it's just the local sausage factory." Oh God, I've smelled sausage. I've never smelled a rotting corpse, but I imagine it does not smell like sausage, or people wouldn't eat sausage. True, true, true. Because true. I've have you ever smelled something dead? Oh man, uh, no. I mean, I don't think I have either. But people say when you do that, you immediately know. Oh, that's a dead body. <gasps> There's ugh. no other thing that could be. No possibilities. No. I'm so, so ugh. and I, I don't understand how anyone could live in a house where there were multiple rotting corpses. And, I mean, like, Petal, you know... <laughs> Don't she, compare Petal she, to a rotting corpse. <laughs> no, but she has a... You know, she has her litter box in her house. I, I'm always paranoid that our house smells like a, the stockyards. I've but, been to your house. does not smell like the thank stockyards. Thank you. And I've been to the stockyards. Okay. For those does for, it smell like my house? No. Okay. For those foreign <laughs> listeners or, you know, those that are not in the DFW area, the stockyards is uh, in Fort Worth, and mm. it is, like, where there's a bunch of cows and pigs and horses, and then there's a rodeo attached to it. I thought that the stockyards was a universal thing. Is that just in Fort Worth? No, they're everywhere, I guess. Okay. I mean, okay. it's just a place where you keep livestock. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry yeah. to I'm sorry to talk down to any non-Southerners. <laughs> you know, they're like, we know what a stockyard hey, is, you loser. you stupid Easterners, you know what the Yankees, stockyards are? Yankees don't know. Yeah. They know. But I'm always worried our house smells. And every house has a smell. and Because, like, you know, you get, like, acclimated to your own house's smell. So then when you go into someone else's house, you're like, oh, my God, what's that smell? But, yeah. like, they probably don't even smell it. No. If you're living in a house with multiple decomposing bodies, Dude. you've you there's no way you just get used to that. No. And I worry my house either smells like dogs or the last food I cooked. And, like, three weeks ago, I cooked shrimp. And for, like, days, oh, it's done. man. Like a Long John Silver's parking lot. <laughs> it was bad news. Well, the but other day, your house smelled like chili, but it smelled really it good. It was good chili. Yeah. I made a pot of chili the other day. It was... So spot on. It and smelled delicious. It was phenomenal. It was some. I just Googled the recipe and I was like, you know what? But it's, I don't smell dog. Oh, good. Well, and I try to keep a pumpkin spice candle. Oh, right? I do smell so that. That's what you like have pot. burning right now and it <laughs> smells very good. Just want my house to always smell like pumpkin oh, pie. Oh, yes. 100%. Uh, you know whose house doesn't smell like pumpkin pie? Ooh, Anthony Souls. That's right. Unless, uh, even if he lit a million pumpkin pie candles, no. it's still going to smell like dead bodies. No. I'm Heather. I'm Christy. And today's uh, topic is the Cleveland Strangler, Anthony Soul, a suggestion from Matt in Australia. Shout out, Matt. Our so, good friend, Matt, that we've hopefully one day will meet we'll in meet, Australia. We'll go to Australia. Oh, I'd love that. Uh, I matched on uh, Bumble with a guy who had been to Australia, and I was like, did you meet a kangaroo when you were in Australia? And he was like, <laughs> he was like... I ate a kangaroo. No! <laughs> People eat those? I guess so. No, they don't. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Every, no, Matt didn't eat it. I know, but I'm just saying, oh, Matt, he's from Australia. Please tell us that people don't. I mean, I'm sure they do. They do. I mean, you know. People in Peru eat guinea pigs. I would say we eat cows and they're pretty, like, calm and docile. Kangaroos will punch you in the face. Yeah, they're so. little shits. But people in India don't eat cows. So, I, I mean, I guess it's all your culture and what you're willing to slaughter. When I was in Colombia, I ate a capybara, which are like... <gasps> Oh my god, you monster! <laughs> you have to see Christy's face. <laughs> no! She's, she's so mad right now. Oh my god! I would love to point out that I was tricked into it. That Who? We were, Who did this to you? My uh, boyfriend at the time's family was like, hey, we have this food, like, have some meat. And I was like, is it chicken? They're like, no. I'm like, is it beef? No. Is it pork? No. I was like, what is this? Then you stop right there. Well, and I go, what is it? They're like, chiguino. And I was like, what's that? They're like, chiguino. Well, I didn't have cell phone service, so I couldn't, like, Google chiguino. And I didn't, so I just ate it. And it was, like, not great. It tasted like, like, kind of greasy pork. I didn't love it. And... Um, I have you seen how beautiful of a creature They're those are? So nice. They constantly have a smile on their face. They're so sweet. They wear sweaters. People love them. They're so the gut. cutest, maybe the cutest animal that exists. I get Christy yelled so loud. My dog's barking right now. <laughs> like you upset Lucy. She's freaking out because you scream so bad. No, we got back. She to She probably the... is worried she's next. Well, I got back to the house and looked up. I typed in Chiguino to English translation, and it was like capybaras, and it's just all these videos of these like sweet, docile, like oh. they look like almost like dogs. It's they... like. A... To be fair, also, they're they rodents. Like, so I ate rodent meat. They like, look like a dog will. and a koala had a baby, kind of. Yeah. And they're sweet. And people keep them in the house. Yeah. <sighs> I'm a monster. That's fine. I 
I'm very affected right now. I might be more affected by that than I am this horrible story that we're about to tell. You're a big animal lover. I'm sorry. Like I said, it was against my will. Anyway, Bumble Date, you know. When someone's like, hey, I hate this meat. Like, Katie Evans, tight. our friend Katie Evans, uh, funny stand-up comedian, local stand-up comedian, and just... Uh, Great person. Great person. She, when she was in Peru, ate a guinea pig. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. You know what? When in Rome. And they will keep them. People in Peru will, like, keep a bunch of guinea pigs as pets in their house, and they'll just run around. I watched this whole thing about it. And then just and then, pick one up yes. like a chicken? Yes. <gasps> they'll just be like, all right, it's time to pick dinner. And then they'll just get a guinea pig that they've been living with as their pet They're and like, eat it. Do you want, you know, Fluffy, Charlie? Oh, God. I mean. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, upset you. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Anthony's soul is more upsetting than Heather eating a capybara. I think. I'm sorry. I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't kill it. I didn't pick it. No. And your and whoever you. your boyfriend at the time, his family are a bunch of monsters, and I'd <laughs> like their number because I have some words <laughs> to say to take. them. <laughs> you got hot take on them tricking me into eating capybara oh, meat. Oh man, it's true. I was. It was a uh, non consensual. Capybara yes. eating. I did not intend to do that. If I would have known what it was, I would just get based on the fact it's like a giant rat. I'm not trying to eat rat meat, so yeah. No. <laughs> oh, speaking of rat meat, season one of Survivor. We oh, all know. God. Here's my day, weekly Survivor update to everyone. The, the island was overrun by rats, did as most them? are. Oh yeah, <gasps> they would eat them a lot, oh. like a lot to the point where they like enjoyed it. It it's was horrifying. It was real gross. But I mean. I thought to myself, what, how hungry would I have to be to eat a rat? Good question. I'd hold out as long as possible. I know that much. I think so. Yeah. Pause and see if yeah, can. yeah, yeah. I thought you were also about. So let's get into this. All right. Who, who Anthony Soul, I had never heard of, even though he is one of the most prolific modern day serial killers. Somehow I did not know who Me he neither. was. Me neither. And this was recent. Yeah. And Matt from Australia, uh, told us hey i watched this documentary on this guy and i'd love to hear you guys talk about it yeah, so we said tweet. we will do that and you too can send us a tweet we'll... please do yeah we'll cover it so if anybody else doesn't know who anthony soul aka the cleveland strangler is here you go one of seven children anthony soul was raised by a single mom in a lower class neighborhood in east cleveland Seven other children belonging to one of his sisters also lived with them. From an early age, Sol was exposed to extremely violent behavior. His mother would regularly abuse his nieces and nephews and force her own children to watch. During a particularly violent episode, his mother forced his niece to strip naked and then beat her with an extension cord until she bled. Not a nice lady. Here's where we should also say... Uh, disclaimer that this is not a pleasant story and there's going to be a lot of talk about sexual assault and violent behavior. So I mean, we won't get too graphic. However, no. it will be mentioned. Also, I mean, the episode's called The Cleveland Strangler. What do you think he did? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's out yeah. there. He strangled people yeah. in Cleveland. But also, it, Cleveland, not getting a lot of good press right now. Ooh, no, it's not. Uh, if you're listening to Serial Season 2. Or Cleveland, Season 3. Or Season 3, my bad. Yeah. Uh Cleveland has a lot of problems Tough and place. this is this does not do it any more justice either as we will see. No. But yeah, he was so he grew up in not a super great area, no. not a super great lady raising no. him. Uh had to see some horrible stuff. Uh, I don't think that excuses. Oh, definitely not. While Strangling Soul people. was described by family as a shy and quiet kid, his violent and perverse behavior started at a very young age. At just 11 years old, he began raping his 10-year-old niece on a daily basis for two years. She said when the trial came out, she said that at 11, he would force her into his bedroom and basically just force her to have sex with him, and it became a daily thing, and then... One of her uncles and her brothers started doing it, too. Good Lord. So these kids are just witnessing all this violent behavior. And living in violence. Yeah, and living in violence. I mean, and violence. this is a start of, you know, he escalates beyond this. Oh, yeah. You know, he sees violence, is excited by it, acts exactly. it out, and then keeps going throughout the rest of his life. That's my biggest problem with, like, horror movies that sexualize violence, especially in, like, 
back in the 60s and 70s, those horror movies where oh, yeah. a girl would be taking off her bra and there are her exposed breast, and then there's somebody a, comes in and stabs her and to death. And then you sexualize this, like, uh, you know, feeling of being turned on we and get aroused. Somebody, get them all horned up yeah. and show them blood. Yes. Okay. Sidebar, really quick. Oh, God. So I've been reading conspiracies on Reddit. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> I'm a favorite. Just so. in general, any particular yeah, conspiracy? I just read general ones, but one of the new conspiracies that's out there. So there's this whole, like, uh, no fab community where it's, like, guys that yeah. choose not to jack off. Yeah. And I don't know why I thought jack off would sound nicer than masturbate. It doesn't. <laughs> Neither of them are good. <laughs> Um, it, they're the same. I feel like it's funny because like jack off sounds like you're like a lazy idiot. Like that guy's just a jack off. Right. But like beat off sounds like you're doing like you're accomplishing something. Like yeah, beat off. Today. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, side note. But there's apparently this conspiracy that internet pornography is a uh, government. <laughs> is this? Yeah, I think you messaged me this the other day. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it's that it's government uh, sanctioned population control, and it's meant to. Um, normalize like bizarre behavior like incest and violence and stuff like that and but mainly it's like readily available and free like someone made the comment like same with facebook of like if something is free then like you're the product then like sure. why is there so much like free pornography and also apparently all of these like Pornhub, RedTube, like a bunch of them, they had a whole list, are all owned by this like one LLC shell company. It's like a Michigan shell LLC company that they like don't know who owns it. But anyway is this the, where the Illuminati comes into play? Yeah, because one of the Illuminati <laughs> one world government conspiracies mm -hmm. is that they want to control the population and like more and more. How more, are they saying it controls the population? Because more and more millennials are like they can't perform in bed sexually oh. because they either masturbate a lot or because they can't get like sexually aroused by like normal stimulation right. of, like a man and a lady yeah. have a nice dinner. Maybe they, you know, throw back some beverages. They go back to the house. They kiss each other for a minute, you know, you got dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And then, you know, you watch the Today Show in the morning. I mean, that's sure. that's my ideal yeah. an evening. But, like, they're saying, like, if it's this, like, crazy violent stuff where it's, like, seven people having a big orgy, yeah. like, really disturbing stuff, that then it, like, warps the people's minds. So then they can't perform with, like, a regular, like... T not that cis, you know, heterosexual sex is, like, regular, but, I mean, like, the type that makes babies. Like, right. P and V impregnation sure. sex. Then they're saying that they're encouraging that because they want to do it for population control reasons. Interesting. So. I, I Conspiracy theory or not, I think just from a psychological standpoint, that makes a lot of sense that um, excessive porn watching would affect your, your abilities yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah, it does. And that's the other thing is like it's like basically causes like a shortcut between like – the visual stimulation and then like the, it goes like straight like zero to 60 whereas like normal arousal like takes some time yeah and that like if then your brain is used to like it's like if you do a bunch of opiates like the things that normally give you dopamine stimulation don't work anymore right, right? And you have to like do more and more anyway that makes sense anyway not that i'm some prude that doesn't like dirty stuff but i'm just saying like they're saying like like what you said well, where it's like, like a dirty, lady yeah and she's like you know something like crazy happens then it if you watch it. your mother make your niece strip down naked and, and then whipped. and when she is starting to become uh, uh, developed and is going through puberty and you yeah. see that as a boy her same age and then you're already turned on then it becomes a violent episode yeah very young age you make this connection between sex and violence and she used an extension cord and that's something he used later in his yes, crimes i don't think that's a coincidence i don't either in 1978 at the age of 19, a woman Sol had been sleeping with became pregnant. They parted ways, and he decided to enlist in the Marines, as you do. I mean. <laughs> in 1981, he married a fellow Marine, but she quickly became concerned by how much he was drinking and divorced him. After this, Sol's drinking escalated, as did his violent tendencies. Yep. In 1989... Sol lured a woman who was three months pregnant to his bedroom. When she tried to leave, he bound her hands and feet with a tie and belt, gagged her with a rag, and raped her. Once Sol fell asleep, the woman somehow managed to escape and immediately went to the police. Sol was charged with kidnapping, rape, and attempted rape. He ended up pleading guilty to the lesser charge of attempted rape and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. 
He served his full sentence and was released in 2005. This is like classic escalative behavior. Sure. Like he's married to the lady. He's drinking. He had a domestic violence conviction in 1987. Aggravated burglary. He was a suspect in 1989 but wasn't convicted. So it's going from like hitting the person you're with, mm -hmm. maybe breaking into a house. And it's like you're inching more and more you towards confidence. this fantasy that you probably have in your head. Oh, sure. You're inching more towards it until he kidnaps this lady with a ruse. He like somehow tricked her into the house. And then does this, and then this is another situation where they're like, "Why would you let him plead to attempted rape? Because he definitely did rape her. Because in this yeah, case, you I don't have that to question too. I mean, you don't have to drag the victim victim through a trial, okay? Because you're like, listen, we're gonna, he's gonna go to jail. So here's my question: How is one charged with both attempted rape and rape? In this case, uh, because it would be at the early charging stage, and so they can drop charges. So you want to go ahead and, like, charge them with stuff, and then when it comes to actually trying them or having them plead to something, you would drop the other charges. So if you're going to charge with someone with rape, by default, you can charge them with attempted rape as I well? I think so, because in this case... Uh she was kidnapped, like he kidnapped her or like kept her in his house and then was doing certain things to her and then left and then actually did the act. So okay. I think it was multiple acts okay. in the same. Gotcha. It wasn't like he pushed her up against an alleyway, you know, ha you know, took raped advantage her. of her, raped her and then ran yeah. off. It was like he took her in his house and did multiple things to her. So I, that would be why I, without looking at the document. So the DA is like, if he'll plead to attempted rape, we'll drop the other charges because we know we can get him away for 15 years. Correct. And I guarantee that uh, the rape charge had a longer sentence, potential sentence. Sure, sure. You know, so, I mean, you're going down, buddy. Like, you're right. And in this case, he learns if you leave a victim alive, they can point mm. at you in court and say, that is the man that did this to me. Exactly. Upon his release in 2005, Sol began renting out a room in his stepmother's home on Imperial Avenue in Cuyahoga County. Same county where Serial Season 3 is taking place. Judge, famous Judge Gall. Lots of corrupt judges are in Cuyahoga County. Yeah. He also began dating Lori Frazier, the niece of the Cleveland mayor, Frank Jackson. You know, the How Cleveland, crazy is Cleveland that? mayor is not pleased. Oh, man. He's a convicted felon. I read, a, I read this article and he's like, well, my niece has made some questionable decisions but we support her and want to know and we're just happy that she wasn't one of his victims here's the thing who hasn't dated a ne'er-do-well yeah and who who hasn't lived in a house for two years where your ne'er-do-well lover was murdering people dude and somehow you just think oh this smell eh, it's probably that sausage That's factory nice. down the street so the two dated from 2005 to 2007 and also lived together in the Imperial Avenue house. Frazier says that during this time, she noticed a terrible smell in the house. Neighbors had also been complaining about a smell. Many thought it might be natural gas or even the sausage factory that was down the street. There's so many possibilities. There's I, another. I was going to say, when I lived in Chicago, I lived downwind from a brownie, like, chocolate oh, factory. Oh, God. Was awesome. That, but also, did you just constantly crave brownies? Always. It's like, it smelled like the brownies. I put on 50 pounds if I lived on the street from just a brownie Just go and factory. find them. Yeah, it smelled like the brownies my mom used to bake when we were oh, little kids, and it was just so delicious. God. Smelling. Wait, it was a brownie factory? It must, I think it was like a chocolate factory, oh. and it was just like hot. It just was like hot chocolate smells. Oh, that's amazing. That's so good. That derailed me for a second. I'm sorry. It's such well, a good here's smell. Well, here's another um, reason that she thought maybe it's not decomposing bodies. <laughs> because Sol told her it was his elderly mother okay. that lived in the house. That's mean. Don't bring your elderly mom. I mean, his mom, mom sounds like I mean, a real I mean, she was B a real word. piece of shit. <laughs> but also... How bad does one have to smell where the neighbors down the street can There's smell no way. you? Also, go up and sniff her. Yeah. It's a sniff test. <laughs> there, it, that's what a sniff test. I mean, I we're mean, not blaming this lady. It sucks. She lived with a murderer. But also, sometimes you, you guys are full of shit. Don't yeah. believe what they tell And you. she was also living in this house and somehow just wrote off this smell. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess the last thing you expect 
is that there are dead bodies in your house. It's this way with any, you know, the Golden State Killer's wife or any of yeah. the BTK's wife where you're like, boy, you come home with a lot of ladies' jewelry in your pockets. Sure. You don't immediately, first of all, I would immediately think that someone was a killer. Oh, yeah. But, I'd be but, like, why does my house smell like a dead body? Oh, because there's a dead body in our crawl space? I would think the average person doesn't go to the extremes that I or you go to. <laughs> right. We, we are. We're extreme uh, <laughs> paranoid people. Extreme thinkers. <laughs> yes. Extreme thinkers. I like that. Well, what no one knew or suspected was that the smell was actually the decomposing bodies of several women Soul had raped, strangled to death, and buried in a shallow grave in his basement. And backyard. And left him in the living room. And crawl space. He got a little lazy. If you have a crawl space, there's a 50% chance you've got a dead body in there. Seriously. There's something spooky in the crawl space. What is a crawl space even for? Why do you need to crawl through it? If you're Except a good... unless you're burying a body. If you're a good architect, you'll design a house where all the space is used properly and you won't have <laughs> yeah. some random outlier space no. into which someone... You can have, like... Two extra feet of ceiling space because your floor is lower Just than where it, it is. Put it in the right space. You don't need a hole where you can shove a, a human no, head. No, you're asking for it if you've got a crawl it's, space. Yeah. That's I blame the builder. That's a Dr. Horton problem. They should have thought about what they were doing. Yeah, before they that's an architectural uh, anomaly. Don't daisy. Do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. In September 2009, Soul invited a woman he knew from the neighborhood to his house for a drink. The woman reported that after a few drinks, Sol became angry and started to hit and choke her. As she was passing out, he raped her. The woman reported this to the police on October 29th, 2009, which we're almost coming up on that anniversary. Police arrived at the Imperial Avenue house with an arrest warrant for Sol for alleged rape. First of all, thanks, uh, Cleveland police, for taking it seriously. Uh, Yeah. Exactly, because they don't on some of the other ones. Uh, yes. While the police did not find Soul at home, they did find something much more grisly. So much worse. On the third floor of his house, on the living room floor, were two badly decomposing female bodies. Just hanging out. Just laying just out on the floor. the fucking floor. And that's why I'm like, did this, did his mom, who I believe it was actually a stepmom, but for some family argument's member. sake, we'll call her the mom. She's living there. Did she never go in the living room and see these bodies <sighs> lying the around? Question. She, was she just holed up in her bedroom? How? Yeah, and how much of a you know recluse do you have to be that you don't notice that there's a dead body in your living room? Oh and God. it's that I don't think that this is. And of course, they had the argument of maybe he's mentally deranged or whatever. I think, well, I think you have to be to do this. Well, and there's a difference between being like. Uh, you sure. know, abnormal psychology and not knowing the consequences of your actions. And yeah. that's like the legal definition of insanity is not like, oh, well, they have a mental disorder. It's like, no, they, they're they so incapacitated. They didn't know the they consequences. Don't know the difference and this wrong. dude took off running whenever. I mean, like he knew what he was doing wrong. Oh, yeah, for sure. And there's witnesses. You know, some of the other victims said, yeah, he said, oh, you're going to tell. Well, if you didn't do anything wrong, you wouldn't be concerned somebody telling. Exactly. You, knew something, you knew what you did wrong. Here's something else I just thought He just of. nasty, too, leaving shit out in his damn living room. What if his, what if the mom did know? Good question. I, I mean, mean, she's obviously got issues herself. Or, I mean, I, there's no, I, I don't. Haven't read any reports that she had like dementia or anything, but I don't know. Yeah, I just or maybe it's she just like, didn't give a shit. You have your suspicions, but you're like, I'm not gonna. Qu-. It's a don't ask, don't tell or situation. A, at this point, she's older. He's more violent, and if he, he is killing mm, people true. in the house, a house where that's the only place you have to live, and also he's shown that he's violent towards women. Do mm-hmm. you want to argue with him and be like, right. stop killing people in the house? Yeah, she's not in a situation where she can really defend herself. Mm-mm. For all we know, he beat her and yeah. threatened her all the time. Yeah, who, never know. who even knows? Well, he wasn't there when police showed up, but two days later, Halloween, police spotted Soul walking down a street in his neighborhood and arrested him. Well, a neighbor spotted him walking down the street, called the police, and were like, he's walking down Ambrose Avenue or whatever. Come and get him. And his name had been, and his picture had been flashed all over the news. So it's Halloween afternoon. You're walking home. <sighs> You look 
and you do a double take, and it's the Cleveland Strangler Jesus. walking towards you. I mean, be cool, man. Keep yeah. your head down. Just go inside and call the police. Wow. It's the scariest Halloween a- one will ever have. <laughs> Seriously, it's a Halloween nightmare that it's a literal, actual serial killer is walking yeah. down your street, and you recognize him You're from the You're in news. your own personal horror yeah. movie. Yeah, and you go inside and call the cops. God. Well, they picked him up. They, they picked him up, uh, and the police began searching his house. They soon discovered the situation was far worse than they could have ever imagined. Four more bodies were discovered in the basement and crawl spaces throughout the house. Also in the basement was a skull from one of his victims, wrapped in some paper and stuffed in a bucket. Bucket of head. What is... (laughs) Don't laugh at that. This is why he got charged with abuse of a corpse. Is that why? I'm sure. I I mean, the rest of them were just buried, I I didn't know if that was a charge that... If one were to have sex with a corpse, that would be abuse of a corpse, which mm-hmm. I'm, I don't think I he there's past him that he did that. either. I, he doesn't. His MO doesn't seem like that. That he, here's my uh, amateur criminal minds. I've seen every episode of Criminal Minds. So I think I'm and I think you're more than an amateur. Pretty qualified. And I've seen like three episodes of Mindhunter. And I read the book Mindhunter, which is based on the guy that invented the uh, behavioral analysis unit of the FBI. You so, should finish Mindhunter. It's really good. Is it really good? Oh, fuck yeah. It's very um, good. I liked the lead actor, so I should probably finish it. Anyway, he seems like his, uh, he's like a process killer. Like, he doesn't like the result. That's why he just sort of buries them and gets rid of them, Mm because they're just like a necessary process. And if he was, I'm not saying that this is an excuse. I will say, though, if he found himself, like, sexually excited that uh, by seeing the violence with the extension cord, Mm -hmm. and also he was... I guess the word I'm looking for is like, like oppressed by female figures in his life, like his mother and grandmother and stuff. Then he would see taking, taking a woman, holding her down and then overpowering her with like strangulation, especially using like the very object of the abuse would be a a way to like take that power back. Sure. So, and he, it was reported too that like people in high school and other guys and stuff made fun of him for not having a lot of sexual experience. Yes. So in his mind, he's kind of showing everybody like, oh, I'll show no, you. you're not going to make fun of me. I'll, I, I'll, I'll take what I want. Nobody's yeah. going to tell me that like, I'm not good enough to get these things. Mm-hmm. And and taking that power back of being like a shrimpy kind of guy. Yeah. Who's yeah. Cause he being... is, he, I told you this the other day and he, you look at him and you wouldn't think he, he doesn't look like a serial killer. Which is if, funny. If, like if what a serial killer like? has a look. Yeah, he you know? he sort of just looks disheveled. He looks like a crackhead. And he did a bunch of crack. Yeah, and he was I mean, a crackhead. He's just sort of disheveled. His skin looks a little, like, weathered. He's yeah. got, like, kind of, like, uh, he's he just sort he's of He's got, looks, like, wild eyes. And he's kind of downtrodden looking. Yeah. Yeah, he just... But he, he's very slight. He's small. He's a little guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So. But... So the police found 11 bodies in total. Four more bodies in the basement and crawl spaces. The basement... Or the skull in the basement... Three more bodies and the remains of a fourth were found in the backyard. Mm-mm. So, yes, this brought the body count to a total of 11. Good Lord. The coroner determined that all 11 victims had been killed by manual strangulation. Many had been gagged and still had ligatures on their bodies around their necks and hands and yes. ankles. And also they said one or two of the victims had a bone in their neck area broken. Oh. And that's how they knew that it was uh, stra- like manual strangulation, either with a hand or with, uh, like I said, he used an extension cord. In some cases, in some cases he just uses bare hands. Yeah. And it's so hard, it literally breaks a bone. And they say, okay, well, if that, it's like the hyroid bone or something like that. Mm-hmm. If it's broken, they know that that's how. How they and it's, that's such a personal and... You also see petechial hemorrhaging in the eyes. Oh, wow. Which is where that it is, is like uh, your eyes... That bleed. was a very criminal minds it's from CSI? From CSI Las Vegas? <laughs> well, Evidence of petechial hemorrhaging? In addition, all of the women had been raped. Yeah. Almost all of Soul's victims were women that lived in his neighborhood. Many were prostitutes and had drug addictions. Soul preyed on this and would lure the women back to his house with the promise of crack cocaine. And he was kind of known to sling. Yes, he was a known user and a known dealer. Because of the lifestyle that these victims led, their families often did not report them missing as they had been known to vanish for days or weeks at a time while on drug binges. One woman did report her mother as missing, but the police did not take her seriously 
and instead told her she'll come home when the drugs run out. Oh, right. This is the uh, subject of a later lawsuit. Yes. Which we'll get into. And this woman was, in fact, one of Soul's victims. Maybe she would have been found. If they had taken uh, the daughter seriously, then perhaps she would have been found, and perhaps, and it probably would also have prevented several other people from dying. Correct. Soul was charged with 11 counts of aggravated murder, over 70 counts of rape, kidnapping, tampering with evidence, and abuse of a corpse. At first, he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, but then changed his plea to simply not guilty. Legal question. Go. What would tampering with evidence be that he got charged with? Uh, that's a good question. I wonder if it would be uh, any, like, hiding any of the items, like hiding any of the rope or mm. uh, trying well, to dispose of Well, they said they found stuff. throughout the house, and they were searching the house, they found jewelry and clothing from the victims, mm-hmm. as well as a lot of their Social Security paperwork. Interesting. So perhaps he was trying to file for their social security to collect money like benefits yeah hmm. yeah it would be really any, him destroying anything or uh hiding any of the items I is that think. just a kind of a typical thing to charge people with I mean, shit man and, you in this case he's like you see there's 88 counts or 86 counts or something like that they're so gonna many. just go ahead and just charge, charge as with as everything possible. yeah yeah if there's evidence of a crime they'll charge you with the crime likely so he's charged with all of these things and they interrogate him yes And then his trial is supposed to start June 2nd, 2010, but was delayed for various reasons. Most of them being that the defense attorneys just kept saying, we need more time. We need more time. They were trying to. Here's the thing. This is kind of a slam dunk for the prosecution. Sure. The defense was arguing that they needed more time to collect mitigating evidence, which would mean evidence that would lessen the severity of his culpability. So like, oh, he, you know, we have all this evidence that he was like beaten as a child Mm -hmm. and he has PTSD from the Marines. And this is all these reasons that it's not really his fault. Sure. Yeah. He was a product of his environment. Yeah. It's not, it's not his fault. You know, it's the environment or the, you know, the world, whatever. (sighs) So, well, eventually the trial began on June 27th on July 22nd. 2011, Sol was convicted on all but one count of aggravated robbery. Everything else he was convicted on. Correct. And on August 10th, jurors awarded the death penalty. So here's where this gets very interesting. He's awarded the death penalty. Sent- he's sentenced to he's the, sentenced you don't to get the death penalty. Yeah, I guess it's not an award. <laughs> if that's an award, that's not a contest you want to win. Not a great prize. No, he was sentenced to death. On two- in 2011. From then until currently at today, I want you. Uh, his listeners. lawyers are still trying to appeal this for various reasons, which like, get very interesting. I want you listeners to know I read a sixty-page, oh, <laughs> fifty-eight-page uh, Supreme Court of Ohio uh, opinion on this case that just came out February twenty sixteen. So I mean, it's like still yeah. So one of the the main reasons. That his lawyers are trying to appeal for the death penalty is because they say his Sixth Amendment was in violation. So, first of all, they appealed it all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court, and it was uh, affirmed. The conviction was affirmed. Uh, So he's exhausted these appeals. Any other appeals would have to be, like, at the federal level, which I didn't find evidence of. And if there is... I was re- reading this juicy uh, Supreme Court case, so I did not get to it. But Well, he kept appealing and appealing, and every time they would appeal, they're like, no, dude. You're, yeah, he got you're, to the, going, like you're said, going to the fucking, well, it's not the chair, but whatever they do. No, Maybe they do the chair. I don't know. What is Ohio? It's Cleveland. Do? They dunk you in the river and set the river on fire. <laughs> you know, the Cleveland River sat on fire. It got it so polluted, it caught on fire. What? Yeah. That's real? Cleveland's a magical oh, city. Oh, it is. It's a beautiful metropolis. It's a beautiful place. Uh, so, Heather, what is the Sixth Amendment? So, the Sixth Amendment guarantees you the right to a public trial. So, the issue here is that part of his... Um, trial was closed to the media so you're well you have a right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury and you basically want it to be open to the public so that you are not uh, swept away in secret courts right and by the public you mean the media has every right to average citizens have every right to to know everything therefore reporting it to the average citizen correct so like in plain english the sixth amendment 
you have the right to a speedy trial, a fair jury, an attorney if you want one, and the chance to confront the witnesses who are accusing you of the crime. So you get to, like, they sit up on the stand and testify, and you get to cross I mean, your attorney cross-examines them. So, I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So what's interesting to me is I guess I didn't ever know that that's a that's like an amendment. I just thought the media was always there filming these things just for media knowledge. But I didn't know, like, it's an actual like law to where that that is supposed to happen. Yeah. I mean, it's the law is not necessarily the uh, the amendments, not necessarily that the media has a right to it. Sure. It's just that it's a public proceeding. And that's serial season three is uh, they confront that because they're in the room with the recorder on. And some of the attorneys are like, she can't be in here. She can't be in here. And the judge is like, it's a hearing. And the Sixth Amendment doesn't, it's not just at trial. It's for hearings, too. And in his case, the media was present for his trial, but they were excluded from a pretrial hearing to suppress his confession. And And that's why they're saying he was not given a fair trial. Because the Sixth Amendment right extends to pretrial hearings. And what was in that pretrial hearing? Oh, right. So he... Was Mirandized, which if you watch 21 Jump Street, you know, you have the right to be an attorney. If you if you want to, you have that right. No, you know, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you, yada, yada. And then you say, you know, do you waive this right? And he just went ahead and talked to the police Mm -hmm. and they had a recording of it. And he started saying, like, yeah, you know, there's a lot of bad people in my neighborhood. And I just feel like I'm the punisher. And I just I have to go through the neighborhood. And, you know, I find these bad women and. And, like you know, Batman. I guess so. He's nightmare Batman. <laughs> and he says, you know, and then I, I just, I, I take him back to my house and then I just kind of blank out. I just, I pass out and I don't know what happens. And when I wake up, they've like left really quickly. Like, I don't know what happened to him. They're just gone. I just, I just don't even know what was happening. Well, his attorneys wanted this to be admitted because they thought it was proof of him having a mental problem. Like he has PTSD or he has some sort of like he blacks out and doesn't even know what he's doing. Yeah. So their argument is that because he has such severe psychosis that he was unable to knowingly voluntarily and willingly waive his Miranda rights. Mm -hmm. And the judge saw the video and the prosecution's like, no, watch the video. Like he's totally fine. Like he's not, he's of sound mind and body. He's of sound mind. He's, he's not coerced. That's the other thing. They weren't like, well, you better let us interview you and you don't get a lawyer. He's like, no, I don't need a lawyer. It wasn't one of those things where you see them, breaking him down for 12 hours and then he finally confesses he's just stupid i mean he started talking and this is not if you're a strangler please confess but if you're an average citizen wait till you get a lawyer jesus christ you don't know what you might accidentally admit to oh and always be like well if you're guilty you'll get a lawyer no 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 if you're smart Mm. you'll get a lawyer if you're guilty you'll open your dumb mouth uh even if you didn't do anything wrong they will find a reason so he went ahead and like said all this stuff so his defense attorneys wanted it in because they thought it was proof of him saying he blacked out and he had no idea. Well, they thought it would help their case of him correct, pleading to correct. be insane. Yes. And the prosecution wanted to suppress it. And the judge wanted to hold this hearing, what's called in camera, which means in his chambers, which is confusing because there's no cameras that in is camera. very confusing. But anyway, they wanted to hold this hearing out of the public eye because... The judge's argument was that if this information was reported to the media, that he's like this vigilante that has blackout episodes or whatever, that he would be further prevented from having a fair trial because it would taint the jury pool. This was already like super media sensation. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? They're like, Anthony Stoll's House of Horrors on whatever avenue is right by your house. And people literally recognized him walking down the street. Like he was in the media. And this was more evidence that would basically caused the jury to be like, yeah, this guy's a crazy person. Well, then is that not guilty by reason of insanity? Or this guy's an asshole. He thinks that he's being like a vigilante, either for the defense or against the defense. It doesn't matter. It would have been extra trial evidence. Like it would have been trial or evidence like outside the trial that a juror would have before they even got on the trial or juror before they even got on the jury. Yeah. So the judge wanted to hold this in his chambers because the jurors would get evidence before even being seated on the and jury. make up their mind and before their the minds. trial even Which, took place i mean they kind of did yeah but isn't that every trial you know i mean you're never gonna have a jury pool where 12 people 
have no idea about this case and haven't formed some sort of opinion about it. Well, especially not a not a a big case like this. No, I mean you may go and get jury. Sure, if it's like it's like a murder, but a hit and run or something that wasn't the news, but a murder trial. Correct. Yeah, there's no way. Well, and also it's like the other half of their issue was that he conducted some juror interviews. So like. The judge did? The juror, the, yeah, the judge convicted, convicted, conducted juror interviews in his chambers as well because the question was whether or not they would be willing to give the death penalty. And mm. so when you're selecting a jury, you basically are just eliminating people from the jury. So you bring them in and you have what's called a veneer panel and you conduct what's called voir dire or if you're in uh, voir dire. Oh, okay. I, I say voir dire. I don't know. And it's because we're from Texas. <laughs> voir dire. Uh, but anyhow... And you're asking him questions of, you know, can you be fair and impartial? Do you have any issues in this case? A lot of the questions were, have you heard about this in the media? Literally, like, every person said yes. Unless you've been living out of the country. I don't know how you wouldn't have. I mean, it was, yeah, it's a huge deal, especially, like, a a local person. Yeah, sure. So their argument was that the judge should have just presumed that there would be a prejudicial jury pool and that they should have just moved it to a different county. But here's the problem. And then the other issue was they put on the juror questionnaire, would you be able to award the death penalty? And some jurors, or would you be able to, or do you think that the only adequate, um, the only adequate punishment for this crime of killing 11 people over the course of two years would be the death penalty? And some people were like, hell yeah. You're right. And then when they get them in the jury panel, they ask them, well, in your juror questionnaire, you said that, you know, the death penalty would be the only adequate punishment. Could you be open to other punishment? Like what about 25 years to life for each count? Well, yeah, you know, maybe, I don't know. I I would think about it. Well, boom. Boom. Then the defense would say, well, I want to strike that person for cause because you get unlimited strikes for cause and you can strike a person for cause if whatever their answer is means that they cannot be fair and impartial. So if they are like, no matter what, I think no matter what, I cannot listen to evidence. I will not not be convinced otherwise. I think that if you kill a person, you automatically deserve the death penalty. Well, you have a constitutional right to strike that person because they're not being fair and impartial. And And the prosecution would want to keep that person. Absolutely. But the defense would strike they that person. They would be person. able to strike them. Yeah. So the defense had like five or six jurors that on their jury questionnaire indicated like an eye for an eye. That's what I think is fair. And other ones that said, you know, well, if he really did kill 11 people, then yeah, I would think the only reasonable thing would be the death penalty. Well, then the judge said, okay, these people with really strong death penalty opinions, we're going to take them in my chambers and ask them individually because basically they seem like they may be pressured by like their co-jurors that if you said, well, on your thing, you know, you said no matter what, you'd give them the death penalty. One way or the other, they may be like, oh, I have to I have to say that. If you've heard like nine other people just be like, hell yeah, he deserves the death yeah. penalty. Then you're like, oh, God, if I say he doesn't, then they're all going to come down yeah, on me. Or vice versa. If everyone's like, I don't know, I don't maybe prison for life. And then a person that would be like, no matter what, I'm going to do the mm-hmm. death penalty. Then that person's going to sneak on the jur- jury panel because they're just going to say whatever's It's like any time you are outnumbered in your opinions about something or yeah, your like, beliefs about something. It's like peer pressure. Yeah. yeah. So they're just like, oh, well, we'll just, you know, we'll go with what the crowd is saying. So mm-hmm. he, so the Supreme Court of Ohio said on the motion to suppress hearing because they only, only – kept the media out of that one hearing and Mm -hmm. it wasn't that long of a hearing and the alternative interest was protecting his right to a fair trial by not having this inadmissible evidence out in public that it was okay like it was not violative of his sixth amendment right and then on the question of questioning the jurors like individually that also because the issue was and also because each of the jurors when questioned by the judge were like Oh, well, yeah, like I could be I can make a decision based on the evidence. I don't have my mind already made up. Bing, bing, bing. That's like automatic. You're about to get on a jury language. Right. I'm not telling you how to get off a jury. But if you really do feel strongly, you have like you really do need to tell the judge. I really can't. Like you said, if you're going to be on a jury or if you're going to be on a death penalty case, could you would you consider the death penalty? No. And I couldn't I couldn't do that. So I would automatically be stricken from the jury. And you have. You're under oath and you have a duty, an obligation to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Venire means tell the truth. And if it gets you struck from the jury, it gets you struck from the jury. Do you really want to hear all the details of this grisly case anyways? That is true, too. I don't. No matter how long the trial is, if it's five days or five weeks, I don't want to be a part of right. that. I mean, it's your civic duty. I would. No, I am open to giving someone the death penalty or not, just depending on factors and circumstances. I wouldn't say, like, 
oh, automatically you killed 11 people, you deserve the death penalty? I think he does. But I would be willing to listen to the evidence. Mm-hmm. And also, like, I'm just a big old nerd, and I think, you know what? Somebody's got to take one for the team. I can be fair and impartial. Sure, I'll sit through the jury. Or I'll sit through the trial. But I just couldn't have that. Well, I'm not, I don't, I'm not pro-death penalty, but I also just, regardless of what anybody did, I wouldn't want that decision to come down to me. Like I said, when I was on that trial, and it was just a um, a civil trial, and it was just money, mm-hmm. the feeling that I had before going back into that courtroom, and this person was about to hear, like, how much money we had awarded them, it was, I felt like I was going to throw up, it's just stressful. knowing that, like, you're going, you just, like, completely changed the course of this person's life. Multiple lives, yeah. You're Multiple change. lives, yeah, exactly. Sorry for all that legal rambling. No, I think that's really <laughs> that's interesting because, well, another really interesting legal thing that happened in this this case is the families of the victims sued the city of Cleveland. They did. So the families of the victims filed a lawsuit against the city of Cleveland saying that some of Soul's crimes were preventable. Correct. Between his release from prison in 2005 and his arrest in 2009, three women accused him of rape. However, due to the lifestyle these women led in prior convictions, the police did not take them seriously and Sol was never arrested. In December of 2008, Gladys Wade encountered Anthony Sol for the first time in her life. She says he wished her a Merry Christmas and asked her to come to his house for a beer. When she refused, he punched her in the face and dragged her toward the back of his house. He began choking her, and she blacked out. When she woke up, she was on the third floor of his house. Wade says Soul demanded, Bitch, take off your clothes. She clawed at his eyes, kicked and screamed, and grabbed between his legs and twisted and squeezed. She was then able to run down some steps where she had to smash her hand through a glass door to get out. God. Once outside the house, Wade flagged down a police cruiser that called EMS to give her stitches and take pictures of her injuries. They also arrested Soul and took pictures of the blood on the walls and floor of his house and Wade's shirt stuffed into his garbage. Detective Georgia Hussein was assigned this case, but never spoke to the arresting officers. Hussein claimed that there were inconsistencies in Wade's story and that when she came down to the station the next day, it didn't look like she'd been punched in the face. Okay, this is 2008. It's crazy. Probably most upsetting was that Hussein didn't tell the prosecutor that Soul had spent 15 years in prison for attempted rape because she didn't think it was relevant. What an idiot. How how? Uh, okay. How is that not relevant? Christy, like, how? Christy, I'm not here to tell anybody how to do their job. But I let am. me just say, Detective Hussein, you suck ass at your job. <laughs> and, and 11 people are dead, partially because of your behavior. Yeah, I'm not yeah. blaming you completely. Well, However, it was 2008. This guy would have been in jail sure. for this crime. This is a reasonably uh, a believable victim. Cut and dry kind of thing. It, she was taken to the hospital. They found her shirt in his house covered yeah. in blood. What do you think? They were just hanging out? Yeah. No, and he had already been not only convicted of attempted rape before, but had been violent against women. What uh, detective? Whoever you're, a sack of shit. Yeah, I mean, what have you done? It, I don't. I, I hope I you do lie awake at night. How can you? I want to know what the thought process was in her head to think it was not relevant to tell the prosecutor he spent 15 years in prison for attempted rape. When also go get the case file and you'll see it was actual rape. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? And it was a plea deal. Oh, well. Oh, I, are you, excuse me. Are you telling me Cuyahoga County is a place where there's some a little bit messed up police work and yes. a little bit the justice system's a little oh, skewed? Yes, we haven't we haven't mentioned all 11 of his victims and all of his rape victims that lived were African-American. Correct. And two of them, uh, Tanya Carmichael and Nancy Cobbs. Their family filed a federal lawsuit in 2011 alleging that the city and county employees uh, were maliciously refusing to take missing persons reports of black residents yes. and mishandling 911 calls of black residents. Yeah. It because was... they were like, oh, they're drug addicts. They're, yeah, they're junkies. They'll, just, who cares? they'll who be cares? home when the drugs run out. Yeah. It's like, no, good. These are people. God. and they're like human beings that deserve to be 
listen to. Just listen to them. And one of, I think it was Tanya Carmichael's um, relative during the, the trial said, they may not have been anything to society, but they're our loved ones. Yeah. That's so a this should have been taken that... seriously. You don't have to be like the most upstanding citizen to have the same rights as any other Joe Schmo in this world. I was talking to my friend who's a elected official and I was like, this is a, not a really hot take, <laughs> but we have got to do something about criminal justice reform. <laughs> and he was like, love you, McKinney, but that is not a hot take. No, You're it's a, absolutely it's right. It's just regular take. I mean, to his credit too, they're doing a lot of like, like uh, data, like trying to use data to solve crimes and stuff. But even that is problematic because then you have the flip side where, Police officers don't take calls about, you know, black women missing. They don't take those calls seriously. On the flip side, there's an overabundance of arrests of black males for just like no Mm -hmm. reason other than like literally walking down the street being black. And then the data that goes into like algorithms to determine like the potential areas of uh, crime are disproportionately targeted at black communities. And it's like a a cycle that goes on and on. Have you seen the documentary 13? Oh, yes. It is. It is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. I highly recommend it to everyone. It's on Netflix, but it really explains so many things that when you get into an argument with someone that is like, well, if there, if black people didn't commit all these crimes, they wouldn't be in jail. No, Uh, that's not the truth at all. That's literally not it. And it's literally been going on for hundreds of years, this systemic thing of why this is even... There, I think, what is it like? Ninety percent of the population in prisons is are black males. Yeah, it's like eighty five percent. It's an it's insane statistic. Well, and it's because too in the nineties they did. Uh, they thought they weren't doing a good job, and they're like, you know what? We'll pass minimum sentencing, minimum mandatory yes. sentences, and for like crack or it, drugs that had infiltrated the black communities at the time, the sentences were like three and five times higher mm-hmm. than for like cocaine, exactly, which is much worse, but was a white rich man's yeah. drug, and it's the same fucking drug pretty much literally the same thing but two different colors of people also there's just like statistics you can download from the department of justice that will say uh equivalent arrests like or equivalent stops that like say you know you have a bag of weed on you Mm -hmm. or whatever and literally the same amount or actually you may have like one ounce and or you know a, a black man may have one ounce and you're a white lady and you have five ounces you're more likely to get let off with a warning mm-hmm. or be charged with like a ticket and he's more likely to get well first of all probably like shot by the police because sure. you're insane but like I, and uh, by the way i'm not anti-police i love good police sure. i think that the number one best thing that we can do is have well-trained police officers who do not automatically think <laughs> racist things yeah and i think that prosecutors can do way more good than one pro one good prosecutor can do more good than a thousand def- good defense attorneys because the prosecutor could just say this is bullshit this mm-hmm. is based on nothing and if you want to just put your fist through a window uh, through <laughs> due to anger listen to serial season three yeah. and listen to the the oh, there's a whole thing about <sighs> I'm so, it just makes me blind with rage Yeah. about uh, one of the prosecutors is like, well, you know, we're just going to charge him. And, and the defense attorney's like, he like literally didn't do it. And here's all the proof. And it's it's just she wastes a ton of time. And at the end of the and day, and why is she just wanting to charge him? Because he's black. I'm well, it's it doesn't come out that well, way. But yes. I mean, potentially, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, yeah. But like at the end of the day, I think they end up dropping the charges or it's like a lesser plea. And it's. It's just like you just wasted everybody's yeah. time, like and a ton doing? of taxpayer dollars. They said his defense cost five hundred thousand dollars. By Anthony the way. Soul's? Anthony Soul's defense cost five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, when they didn't put a, they did the defense did not present any evidence, Mm-mm. nor did they call any witnesses. So five hundred thousand dollars for this piece of shit to sit there while the state had the burden of proof on them to prove yes, he did that, even though. You guys found 11 rotting corpses in this house. Chances are he fucking did this. And Why are we even going through this? Well, as you say, and some of the other arguments was that the defense should have, uh, because it was, it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. And you, you have a right to a good defense. And I think a good defense would have said, hey, uh, you should plead guilty to like maybe one or two of these. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe they'll give you life in prison. Mm-hmm. And then you will not have this parade of horrors mm-hmm. before the public and the media. And then inevitably you're going to get the death penalty. And that was one of the arguments, uh, his appeal, uh, appellate lawyers, because you you have different attorneys at the trial court level and the appellate level. And that was some of the argument that the appellate lawyers made was like they spent way too little time 
defending him, uh, defending against the death penalty for him. Sure. And that's, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not a criminal lawyer. This is not legal advice. But if it were me, I would say, uh, yeah, plead guilty to one or two of these things, one or two of the murders, whichever ones that they had the most evidence for, and we'll just please don't give him the death penalty. So how can he even, what was the the reasoning the defense had for him pleading not guilty? Do you have to... They don't have to say this is why he's not guilty or or no, give a, give a point the finger to another person that did it no, because no, no, no. The, the sta- it's on the state. Right? The state has the burden of proof that b- prove that he killed these people, b- uh, prove that he did the counts, the eighty some odd counts beyond a reasonable doubt. I mean, in this case, so how? It wasn't but hard. how can you even? I mean, I guess you have the right to plead not guilty, but like, yeah, what is right the, to what is even the logic there? If he There's, didn't do it, who did? Well, exactly, and there. Uh, it... Or is he just, is it more not guilty because I'm not responsible because I was beaten as a kid or had to watch people get beaten as a kid and I, I I'm know. a product of my terrible environment? Well, and I, don't, I was going to say, I don't know what their thought process was and that's why the appellate lawyers That seems crazy like, to me that you would plead not guilty. Well, so the appellate lawyers were like, this, you, you, did, you, you goofed because yeah. you basically gave him the death penalty by letting him plead not guilty and go to trial because... He's going to get convicted because there's so much overwhelming yeah. evidence. This is a classic case of, like, plead out so that you can get a lesser sentence. Mm-hmm. And and the, Like he did with his attempted rape. Correct. He knew that he did. They knew he did that. But yes. they the said, reward, we'll drop these charges. You plead to attempted rape. It's basically a... Or you, you say you... Yeah, you plead guilty you admit to, to Yeah, you plead yeah. guilty to an attempted and rape. It's basically like a balancing act between for the prosecution to say, okay, well, we're going to save taxpayer dollars in... Trying this case, we're going to save the trauma to the victims if we could just get him to plead guilty, even though we have to forego the death penalty. Or if they're, like, really aggressive and, you know, elected officials maybe want to look like they're tough on crime and say, you know what, F you, buddy. We have plenty of evidence Mm -hmm. to get you convicted of the death penalty or convicted of this and get you the death penalty. We don't need your plea. So it's just it's a balancing test on what they decide to charge, what they decide to accept or offer for a plea, and then what the defense will counsel their client to do but defense attorneys cannot plea on behalf of their client so right. if you tell anthony soul hey buddy you had two bodies on the floor when the cops came in mm-hmm. i would just cop to this and hopefully you get 25 to life and he's like nope i uh i don't want to do I'm that i'm gonna plead not guilty uh, i don't want to do that yeah i mean at the then end of the day go, is his life it's his plea. so he gets to decide what he says and they say all right i'm gonna go on record and tell you don't do that right and he's like i'm gonna do it anyway so i don't know it's Man, this is why... I do think he had a fair trial. This is why you just don't kill people. You know what? Save us all a little bit of money and effort and trouble yeah. and don't kill people. Exactly. And also, if you pick a person up for a crime and uh, maybe they've been uh, convicted of a previous crime that's kind of similar, you speak up. Yeah. Because yes. that was 2008 and maybe 11 people exactly. would still be alive. So citing in- insufficient evidence and a victim that was not credible. So the prosecutor was saying that Wade was not credible. Can I just say that that's a code word for a black yes, person? Yes, it sure is. And that's, that's just, why I, mean, that's... I have these in quotes. And they were in quotes in the article I read as yeah, well. Because this is bullshit. That lady was perfectly credible. Sure. If she wasn't credible, the two patrolmen would not have gone back to his house and picked him up. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's a She came flying out of his house with a fucking bloody hand and yes. blood all over her, her shirt and, and her clothes were in his house. Yes, that's that's well, a credible witness. I'm call bullshit. Yeah, it was total bullshit. And the prosecutor opted not to charge Soul because of this. <sighs> so then he gets to continue to rape, murder, and dismember more victims. Had the police done their job, Soul's case would have been brought before the grand jury and six lives would have been saved. Good. That's God. fucking crazy. Which is why the family's the victim's family then goes back and sues because they're like, hey, our fucking family members wouldn't be dead if you idiots had done your job in the first place back in 2008. Seriously. And I will say the Tanya Carmichael and Nancy Cobb's lawsuit was dismissed and they appealed it to the Sixth Circuit and it was also dismissed. Or it was, yeah, so they upheld the dismissal. So they are set the. City argued that there was no allegations that support a finding of racial animus. Well, Serial Season 3 just came out, so <laughs> yeah. give it a listen. Well, in 2018, a jury did award $1 million in damages to the families of six of Soul's victims. Well, good. The money was split evenly among the families. 
The city of Cleveland is also reimbursing the family's lawyer fees, but refuse to admit any wrongdoing with the settlement. There's a settlement. According to Cleveland.com, the city has now spent more than $21 million on lawsuits since 2004. Whoops. So you think maybe they're corrupt and they don't know what the hell they're doing? If in the past 14 years, they've spent over $20 million? (sighs) I mean... Again, this is why Serial Season 3 it this went is just to a, this, this. is an hour and a half av- advertisement uh, yes. for Serial Season Sarah Conan, we love you. Please have us, please give us jobs and have us on your show. Yes, you were amazing. Um, but, I mean, there's a reason that a national podcast did decide this is the city that we're going to go yeah. focus on. They're completely corrupt. Yeah. And I... More stuff is going to keep coming out. I about, think so. About this. Oh, for we're sure. only on episode what four or five of that show, and it's God. The, some of those judges are up for re-election, and I don't think they're uh, going to I keep their don't. jobs. So Judge Gall, you have the Gall to be openly racist and misogynistic every damn He's day in your court. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And when they're man. like, "Do you think that maybe you're racist?" He was like, "No, no. not at all." And I was he, like, he genuinely does man. not think he is. <laughs> he thinks he's. He's like. I gotta speak their I'm language, these homies, and you're like, nope, don't he call, say that. He <laughs> refers to them. He calls them in court brothers, <laughs> dudes, homies, baby daddies, and he's like, I'm just speaking the language that they understand. And you're like, Could you, sir? That's a huge implication that that's the language they understand. That's very racist. My God. He's a nightmare, and I hope he loses his reelection. Oh, I, I, I think he will. If uh, he, I has mean, literally, to. you would if you were his opponent, you just have to buy airtime and be like. This is Judge Skull, <laughs> yeah. and just play a recording, yeah. and be like, "Don't do that again." Yeah, don't and then you get again. to advertise on cereal along with Melchimp. It's <laughs> you and the Melchimp. It's his, his opponent. Well, mm-hmm. there's probably a ton of other crimes that Anthony Soul is responsible for as well, and they either were reported and not investigated, or not reported. Exactly. Who knows? His DNA has been entered into a database, and police in East Cleveland are looking into several manual strangulation cold cases from the 1980s to see if these can be linked to him. God. Perhaps not surprisingly, these murders stopped in 1989. When, when he... Seoul went to prison. Interesting. They are also working with police departments in other states to see if similar crimes that took place while he was in the Marines can be traced to him. Oh, yeah. After his arrest for the murders, a woman in California came forward saying that she had been raped by Seoul when he was stationed at Camp Pendleton. I mean, this is... I'm a... sure a ton of people. It's a situation where he has, for years had this proliferation like uh, he had a tendency toward doing violent acts mm-hmm. sexually motivated since he was 10 years old sexually motivated violent acts and the only thing that stopped him is being in jail yes so it stands to reason that for the the one that he was picked up for in 1989 wasn't his first one sure and it stands to reason that in between 2005 and when he was arrested that there were more absolutely and that earlier before that i mean you know it's like th- these are not uh unreasonable postulations no. since he was 10 years old he's been raping women can you imagine True. he's a lifelong many, when he was picked up when he was 51 i think yeah he's a lifelong criminal absolutely well unfortunately the police have not been able to confirm the woman that came forward in california just yet but hopefully this dna databases which man do you think when Whoever came up with 23andMe and Ancestry.com, do you think they thought what a big player this would be in Crim- criminal, in criminal law? investigation? Yeah. Or it's all set up by the government to get all oh, of our... Oh, God. Here she goes. The tinfoil <laughs> hat is out. Also, Lucy, the chihuahua, is now in the room. She has a tiny tinfoil hat on as well. <laughs> she is a believer. She's, I'm a true believer. <laughs> She's a true believer, too. So I do a voice for my dog. Do you do a voice? Oh, absolutely. We okay. have voices for Ella, for the dog. They all kind of sound the same. <laughs> but uh, yes, they all have voices for um, sure. No, I think that uh, they probably couldn't even conceive of the importance of the databases and that I they think were creating. They are going, that is really going to be just a, a turning point in how criminal investigations are done. And really just kind of luck of the draw. Like yeah. you don't have to 
do that much investigating. You just plug in their DNA and, well, like, true, and maybe something pops up. It doesn't even, like, look at the Joseph James D'Angelo. Like, yeah. it doesn't even, the Golden State Killer, it doesn't even have to be his DNA. Yeah, exactly. It was a relative's DNA. Exactly. And they were like, well, you're kind of linked. We're going to get you. Well, this oh, was a doozy of a episode. This guy gets the Golden Juice Award. He is a, a douchebag like OJ. Huge piece of shit this yeah. guy is. Uh, he currently is still residing on death row. Oh, can we in say Cleveland. he got in a little bit of trouble when he was in jail? Oh, uh, that's right. He committed some uh, infractions. He cussed at a prison guard. Well, that seems like that. I, anybody <laughs> doesn't everyone have that infraction? I mean, you know, and I think feel like if you're a prison guard, you can take it. Yeah, <laughs> You've, yeah. You're you've used heard. To it. You've heard it all. What a tough job. Let's shout oh, out to the fuck, prison guard that no. has to work the death row in the Ohio jail. I could jail. never. Um, and then also he accepted $140 from a murderabilia website for his artwork, which is in violation of a statute that prevents uh, criminals from profiting from their murder. So, like, if you're – if he were to write a book or something about, you know, killing all these people, he wouldn't be able to keep the So profits. what was his – item that someone bought off murderabilia this murderabilia his drawings they bought (sighs) artwork that he drew what sicko is looking for serial killer artwork probably a lot actually yeah i mean people were obsessed with manson and and his drawings and the music that he put out and everything the only charlie manson i like is off of south park (laughs) that's a good that's a good one he's a good charlie manson i mean it's the same thing with like Women that write to serial killers and, Ugh, and a whole end thing. up marrying them and stuff. Yeah, we should just do a whole episode on that. But yeah, they're. I thought I had bad taste in men. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but there is a law, correct? That like, or wasn't there something that was trying to get passed so s- killers and stuff can't sell their stuff? Correct. And, yeah, and like for said- the. For sake of the victims and the victims' families. Correct. Yeah, it's like the it's one of those where they have a long name and it like it, it comes out into an acronym, but it's like the inability of offenders to profit from yeah. violent crimes or victims of violent crimes. So it's disgusting. And yeah. don't go buy stuff that known serial killers or murderers have. That's very disrespectful what kind of to a tool. Everyone has been affected by this. Seriously, what kind of tool do you have where it's like a framed artwork and someone's like, "Oh, that's a nice picture yeah. of a tree." Did you know the Cleveland Strangler drew it? <laughs> ah, that's I'm leaving crazy. your house. Yeah. You're creepy. Yeah, if you ever go, if you have a friend that has some artwork by a serial killer, maybe don't be friends with maybe them. Maybe don't be friends with them anymore. Leave them. Well, Matt from Australia, we love you and thank you for this suggestion. Um, it was really interesting researching something I did not know anything about. So, I, I mean, this episode I was able to go on long-winded rants about not only the Constitution and uh, legal terminology, but also conspiracies. <laughs> All of her face. And Lucy's sitting in her lap. My so stupid chihuahua. She, so Heather's heard... in her happy place right now. You guys, when I confess to eating a capybara, <laughs> Christy oh. yelled so loud you know and what? upset the dog. And she, I, I had, to had bring forgotten her... about that till just now, but now I am... I have been re-victimized, and I am <laughs> upset again about this copy bar thing. Christy yelled so loud, she made the dog bark. So if you heard any barking throughout the episode, that's what it was. Yeah. But, but uh, Lucy. She's Hi, been Lucy. Fine. We'll you put a picture of the monster. Goose. We'll put a picture up of Goose and a picture of the, the beautiful copy bar. <laughs> that I chomped on deliciously. Um, well, in addition to Matt from Australia, we have some other shout-outs. Oh, yeah. Um, Denise F. from San Antonio. I think she designs roads, which is a really cool job. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. Jennifer G. On Instagram. Thank you. April M. From Facebook. Thanks for sending us a message. And Shannon Y. Yeah, thanks so much for reaching out. Let us know if you're listening. If you have any topic suggestions, Aaron A. also sent us a topic suggestion about a cannibal that I think we're going to cover. Yeah, we, I think, have almost covered every listener suggestion we've had. Yeah, we basically There's maybe have... like one or two we haven't got to yet, but we will cover it if you ask well, us to cover something. Well, it's funny because something. we have a whole list of things we want to cover, mm-hmm. and then someone's like, hey, cover this instead, and we're like, ooh, that's way Yeah, we're cooler. like, that's way more interesting than what, <laughs> what our list says. Yeah, and I think our list is interesting. It's just like novel. Like, it's just a thing sure. we didn't think of, so we'll do it. Yeah. Um, and if you want to send us a listener request, find us on Facebook at Sinisterhood. You can go to Sinisterhood.com to get all the show notes and all the links to yes, our Yes, Heather media. has now updated all of our past episodes with wonderful show notes. There's links to all the bizarre, random things we mentioned. And you can also visit us on Instagram at Sinisterhood Pod as well as Twitter at Sinisterhood Pod. 
You can follow uh, me at Heather versus the World on Instagram or MCK versus the World on Twitter. Christy? You can follow me on Twitter at Christy or GTFO and on Instagram at Christy M. Wallace. Just want to remind everybody, next Friday, it's so soon, and we're October, very excited. October 26th, Dallas Comedy House. 11.30 p.m. Come and see us. If you want to hang out with us before, we're going to be at Cold Beer Company from 9 to 11 p.m. October 26th in Deep Ellum, Dallas, Texas. And we'll have our tarot cards. Mm-hmm. And we'll have Rodney the Skeleton. Rodney the Skeleton will be there for photo ops. If you want to meet him. And then we'll all head down to the live show. It's going to be a ton of fun. So fun. We're going to have contest giveaways. We're hoping our stickers will be there by then. We also are going to be debuting a little special something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do we want to announce it or no? Should we announce it or should yeah, it be? Can. It'll be a surprise. It'll, it'll, be a surprise. it'll be a surprise. Okay. It'll be a surprise. Um, yeah. And we can't wait to see you there. We hope to see everyone there. It's going to be a fun way to kick off the Halloween weekend. All right. As always. The devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. <laughs> Sinister. Who-